Hey guys, it's your girl Nothing's Impossible, 77th Street out of Brooklyn. And as you guys can clearly see, I am out of the hospital. Uh, guys, I don't even know where to start, so I might as well just get to the point here. Um, I was hospitalized at New York Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn, and it was by far the worst experience I've ever had in a hospital, ever. And don't get me wrong, guys. I don't really come out and tell you guys all the details, the intricate details of what I've witnessed health care um, as becoming. I mean, I don't want to say that what's health, what health care is becoming because it's already, it is, it is what it is. But I've had by far enough. You know, it this this video is going to end up being very lengthy, so I just want to cut to the chase. You guys can read between the lines, and I want you guys to share this video and spread the word. I want New York Hospital, New York Methodist Hospital, to be put on blast for the way they've treated me, and I'm sure that they've treated others. It's unacceptable, you know. I went there on the 12th of January. I think, of course, that was a Sunday, I believe. I was in the emergency room for over 30 hours. I didn't have a problem so much with the emergency room as far as being in there over 30 hours as much as I did the just what I had to deal with, you know, during my wait to get a, a, a room. The reason I was in there for 32 hours is because they admitted me and they didn't have a bed. They have actually, I think, that particular weekend had record numbers of people coming into the emergency room because Brooklyn is facing a lot of hospitals, uh, hospital closures. Like a lot of hospitals are closing. Uh, Long Island College Hospital, which we call Lich, is one of them. Uh, Interfaith Hospital is another one. Um, I'm, guys, I know I look a hot mess, but I don't care. I just combed my hair. It's not even combed. For nine days or 11 days, my hair hasn't even been combed. So please pardon my appearance, but I had to come through because I'm hurting. Physically, I'm hurting. Emotionally, I just really was really scarred by what happened to me at that hospital. Okay, so I digressed a little bit. So I was in the emergency room for all that time, and they've seen record numbers, uh, record-breaking numbers of people because of the hospitals in Brooklyn that are actually closing now. That being said, it was a nightmare. So around the 30th hour, I asked my nurse, who was openly annoyed with me asking her questions like, can I speak with my doctor? Sorry, guys. My nurse was openly annoyed with me asking her questions like, could she call my doctor? What happened to my pain medication? What's going on? Um, you know, and just different things. Could you page my doctor for me? And, you know, I must admit that folks may not be used to a person like me being in the hospital because many people have a tendency to want to believe that just because a doctor or a nurse says something that it's written in stone. And this is my body. I'm experiencing these illnesses. I'm the one that has heart disease and lung disease and joint disease and um degenerate and 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 um and um obstructive sleep, sleep apnea and hypothyroidism and fibromyalgia and arthritis and do I need to go on and on. I'm the one that experiences these things every day. I'm the one that's feeling it. And I will be damned if someone is going to tell me what I feel or how I feel or how I should feel or question why I feel what I feel or any of the above. I will tell you what I feel and you will respect it. Okay, now I told this nurse I was hungry. I was being given medication. I had a headache. I was already in pain. I was miserable. And I just wanted something to eat because I had not eaten. It was 30 hours into the emergency room. And this nurse 
out of nowhere. I was speaking to my particular nurse that was assigned to me. And this nurse goes, well, I've been working for, here for a while and, I, and I'm always hungry. So, you know, get over it. Deal with it. So I'm like, who's your supervisor? So she tells me. So I ask for her supervisor. The supervisor comes, gives me a yogurt from her own, you know, lunch or dinner. And the yogurt was like someone gave me a, 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 a five-star meal. That yogurt was so good to me. So I'm sitting there just mixing my yogurt, mixing my yogurt. And all of a sudden, the curtain just slams. Like, you know, when you hear, you hear the curtain shut, shoo, shoo. the curtain was there where I could was right by the desk. And the nurse who told me to get over it came and closed the curtain on me. So I looked up. I was like, why did you close the curtain? It's been open all this time. You know, I'm like, I didn't, I mean, I'm thinking and I'm talking. So I'm saying stuff out my head and inside my head. I'm like, I'm hot. Leave it open. She's like, I don't want to look at you. I was like, well, you don't have to look at me. Look down. And then this doctor comes out of nowhere and takes my bed and slams it against the wall uh, not against the wall, but to the side and, and, and moves me. And he goes, she does she close the curtain and we can move your bed. And he just gets into this rage and, host, and of, of hostility. And then he walks off and just leaves my bed like vertical, like slanted. The way he was so hostile and angry, you just left my bed. I was like, what? But I was recording and I, and I, I didn't even remember that I was recording because I was... I'm a vlogger. I was recording. Check it out. This is what happened. See if you can hear when the curtain closes. And see if you can hear when he slams my bed. Why? I'm hot. Why? Why do you need it closed? I don't need to look at you, honey. I don't know. No, you don't have to look at me. Look down. It's okay. I want to leave it open. It's okay. Could you please leave my curtain alone? Please leave my curtain alone. It's okay. She needs this closed. They're doing their work here. We can leave this open. All right. But doctor. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to fry me here with that. Why are you moving me? I'm moving you so you can't move, move the curtain. So I can't move the curtain? That's correct. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. <sighs> okay, guys. So... That happens. I get through it. One of the attendings come by and I tell him what happens with the resident. That was another resident. We're going to go into a, a resident situation, another one in a minute. And uh, finally, after about 34 hours, I'm not quite sure, but they got my room and I went upstairs. When I got upstairs, I was in a room that had four people in it. I've never been in a room with four people. It was very interesting, but the first thing I noticed was that the dust was so thick on the windowsill that I could, I could run my finger through it and leave a path. A trail. The room was absolutely disgusting. It was dirty. The bathroom was dirty, the bedside was dirty, the walls were patched up and you can see where they put stick tape and it just it was so, I was already feeling sick, I was already feeling under the weather, I was in pain, I was just discouraged by what happened already in the emergency room and then I come upstairs to that room. And the only bright light, the only thing that was bright in that room were the 
my patient, the other patients that were with me, and they were so wonderful. Eventually, they moved me to another room. I did not request it, by the way. I guess I don't know. Somebody must have. I don't know. They, you know, they moved me. So, well, I wasn't getting any sleep that night, and that was another thing. But anyway, they moved me. So, the room, the second room they brought me to was very small. And it was, you know, the roommate, again, was very nice. The room was filthy. The bathroom was filthy. The windowsill was filthy. The bathroom stunk. It was dirty. This is the windowsill. And that's all complete dust. It's unacceptable for patient care to look for an, a room to look like this. It's just unacceptable. You know? Some people wouldn't let their dogs have a room like this. This is the bathroom. This is the floor. If you can see, that's dirt. That's dust on the floor. And it has a bad odor in here. Nobody has come in here today and cleaned it. This is the bathtub. Of the floor. Um, it was awful. The nurses were rude, and I got, you know, this nurse who tells me that the resident that's on duty is her good friend. She's letting me know that's her buddy, and I should have known because they both double tag teamed me. I was supposed to get a test done. Uh, before leaving the hospital and this doctor did not see it necessary for me to get the test done because he said it didn't have anything to do with why I was in the hospital and so he he, he said I wasn't going to get the test done because they he, his reason no the reason he said I couldn't get the test done was because they only did, did those tests on, emer on an emergency basis on the weekend so I called upstairs to patient relations and I asked, you know, someone if I could get it done because I live in a four-story walk-up where I have to climb 52 steps and I hardly can go up and down my steps as it is now. And since I'm here, can we knock it out? And I'm willing to wait. She said, okay, we got you scheduled for in the morning. So they put me on NPO, which is no food at all after midnight. And I didn't eat anything. And in the morning, they came and got me around 10 o'clock. I had no breakfast. And when they was reeling me down, I saw the resident in the little room next door to where I am, and he was smirking. He had like a very, you know, like a, you know, when somebody's smirking, like they're like, yeah, yeah, you know. So I was like, I said to myself, I don't care if he's smirking. I'm going to get my test and just get out, get out of here and go home. Well, wouldn't you know that when I went downstairs, someone had gone in the system and canceled the test. After I was NPO, didn't eat anything from 12 midnight, did not eat anything in the morning, and was down there after drinking eight or nine eight ounce cups of water so my bladder could be full so they could see my abdomen because I was taking an abdominal sonogram and I get downstairs and I can't take the test the the sonogram technician is like I don't know what's going on but you were in the system and now you're not hey guys um I'm at New York Methodist Hospital. I'm in the ultrasound room about to get a sonogram. And yesterday there was a lot of confusion with my sonogram um, to the point where a, a resident tried to cancel my appointment and I had to go over his head to administration and get my point, keep my appointment. And this morning after drinking several glasses of water, look, my, my appointment still being in the system, they rolled me down here and my appointment has been canceled by a doctor and they cannot, they're not able to tell what doctor canceled my appointment. 
I'm down here ready to get the sonogram done. And upon coming down here, it's been taken out of the system. I don't know what to do at this point. So I'm gonna keep you here for the while yes. because I just spoke to the nurse. Yes. Uh, she, I don't know, they're not gonna order this like in the, the suit, like let's say in the 20 minutes, so I'll have to send it back. Okay. Because, because I know what you want here. Yes, I understand. I'm waiting. I, I made a few calls. I'm waiting to see what's going on. So I spoke with the nurse manager. She uh -huh. asked me to give her like 10 minutes. Uh -huh. So if she's not going to pull back, she, she has to pull back to tell her what's going on. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry, that's not me. That's okay. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah. An NPO for ultrasound. One. 18. It is. So now I start to think, oh, I know what the smirk was about. And she's calling and they're calling upstairs and they're calling and this one is calling and that one calling and no one can fix it. Because apparently this medical resident went to the chief medical director and had the chief, the head, stop the test. Which, once a medical director stop the test it can't be overridden why would you allow me to go NPO through the night into the morning be real downstairs to drink water to have my abdomen full to play such a dirty trick on me to have me go through that to humiliate me isn't it humiliating enough that I'm in this dirty nasty hospital where the I mean I don't know what you guys think you know Methodist Hospital but I live in a nice, clean environment that I love being around. And my home is kept well, and it's tidy. And it was an embarrassment and a total, it was, a, it was absolutely disrespectful for you guys to even put me in a room like that or any other patient in a room like that. By the way, we heard that there are some beautiful rooms in Methodist. However, I didn't see them. And who's in them? Certainly wasn't me. You know, I forgot to tell you how this guy comes in and when I got the appointment, you know, scheduled, he comes and he goes, hallelujah, you got it done. And then his little girlfriend, the nurse that he says fr they're friends with, she comes in and goes, oh, you can get things done, huh? It's almost like they wanted to show me, you don't come in here with your little cocky self and think you can get anything done. Because if we say it ain't going to happen, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. So... They bring me back upstairs and I didn't eat anything until 6 o'clock that evening. It's 6.26 p.m. And I'm just about to eat my food now. This is the first morsel of food that they've served me today. And it was just one thing after another. I appealed the decision not to do the test and so the appeal board said that I could stay until it was decided and they could not provide a chart until Tuesday of this of the following week because it was Dr. King's um, holiday weekend so I stayed and you know what on Monday guys I just got up and I said I can't do this anymore I'm I'm better off at home I wouldn't want to bring my dog to New York Methodist to be treated like that and to be housed in the environment that I was housed in. I found some type of fungi under my bed, under the mattress. It was so disgusting, I called environmental services and asked them to change my bed. So guys, the nurse technician comes in to make my bed this morning. As you can see, she just made the bed. Um, and she lifts the bed like this. And this is what we see. This is what we see. What in the world? Really? As, I mean, this is what I've been sleeping with. I mean, it's going to be all kind of infestation of bugs and, oh, I don't know just better off to be home 
in the comfort of your own house. I just feel like I'm in a dirty environment. Mm. Mm. And a several people came up and immediately when they saw what was how what was living in the bed that I was on because that bed came with me from my old room to my new room. I'll show you guys a picture of it. It was just one thing after another. I'll just try to put as much as I can to show you what I experienced but shout out to the patient rep that tried to help me she was awesome and she had a glow about her that was unbelievable and I said to her how long have you been working here and she said a month today and I was like it figures that you know you haven't it hasn't your new blood you're different and shout out to the nurse Her initials are J.R. Yeah, she was awesome. Shout out to the technician. Her, her name starts with a T. That just, you know, made a difference. Shout out to the orderly or the other patient tech, which is a gentleman, and his name starts with an S. Shout out to the people who still made a difference. Shout out to the sonogram technician that still wanted to help me even though and tried her darndest to get that reversed and felt so bad that I was NPO'd and came down with a full bladder and wasn't able to be helped. Shout out to the administrator that tried to get the test for me. But that resident, you're in the wrong line of business. You came in my room with your condescending... Uh, you know, behavior, your sarcasm, and you got it done, didn't you? You just made sure it wasn't done because you were going to show me. How did you feel that night? Did you ever have a parent with heart disease or lung disease or joint disease? You're a doctor for crying out loud. You're a medical resident, and that's the pleasure that you and your little res registered nurse girlfriend do tag teaming and keep coming in and almost wanting to laugh in my face but you couldn't clearly do it and then you Mr. Medical Resident come in my room later on talking about I know you're mad at me because you didn't get the test but I just looked at you because I said you don't even know the half and then when I finally discharged and I was supposed to get my medication to go home with you know, I was supposed to be administered med administered medication. It was wiped out the system. So when the nurse came to give me my medication, she said it was it was grayed out. And even the nurse said, I don't usually see that. And I knew that down to the last minute, you were still rubbing it in. I hope you feel good about yourself. I'm still here. I'm at, I have joy in my soul. I have peace in my heart. No hatred. I only feel sorry for you. Why did you get into this profession? So sad. Healthcare is going to the dogs and Methodist Hospital is falling apart. Used to be a great hospital. I will say that. I know that firsthand from family and friends. But what in the world happened to it, I don't know. People in Brooklyn, we need to pray. I'm out, guys. Peace and love. Later. This is actually the railing of my bed, so I'm going to try to wipe this. Okay. As you can see, this is like a... This is coming off. If you see, it's coming off. So all it really needs is a good wipe. And this, I don't know what this is, if it's gangrene or fungus, but... And this is, is this blood? I don't know. I don't know if this will need like more than just water or alcohol. But it's just disgusting. Something's not going on right here. And this used to be a very reputable hospital. This used to be one of the top hospitals in Brooklyn. So I have no idea what's really going on. But People deserve to get the best health care for their families and their loved ones. And when you come into an environment and you're already sick, you shouldn't be prone 
and open to an infectious environment. You know, it, this is not even something that should be debatable or argued about. This is just what should be. So hopefully by me doing this video, you know, I could change something. I could make a difference. This is the corner once again, where that's the corner. Can you believe this, guys? That's the corner of a room where nothing has been moved or wiped. The blinds, if, let me bring this back out a little bit more. The blinds are totally filled with dust, thick dust. So, hopefully I can get a nice shower, I mean a nice bath, get washed up and feel clean. I feel nauseous right now.